In Athens, the British men's cox was four, followed the success of Sydney and consolidated its position as the top men's boat. Well, since Athens, the faces have changed, but the success has continued. In 2005, the men's crew were unbeaten. All the promise of the summer comes to fruition on the waters in Japan, and Great Britain are the world champions. But Steve Williams knows only too well that this means everyone else will be gunning for them. That's always the question we ask, you know, is there more pressure this year because we're world champions, we're unbeaten now? Um, but I don't think it's such a new thing, you know, even last year we'd got to um, 13 races, I think, unbeaten. Um, so we had a little bit of that pressure last year, so it's not something completely new. Um, and to be honest with you, being a favourite is quite nice, you know, everyone looking at you, everyone seeing what you can do, that's quite a nice feeling, so we're just trying to enjoy that. Peter the most inexperienced member of the crew must think that rowing and becoming a world champion is an everyday occurrence. I'm feeling really good at the moment. My, my body's in great nick. Uh, Jürgen's been pushing us hard all season, but um, the four of us have responded well to the training and we're, we're all uh, in the best shape of our lives. But for the four, surely the main focus of the year is the World Championships at Dorney in August. World Championships on your, on your own uh, doorstep is obviously something pretty special. Um, you know, we're up for that. We want to put on a good show for everyone who comes and watches us. It's massive to everybody in the team. Uh, normally we're thinking about the Olympic Games in a few years' time, but for us all this year, I think it's all about the Dorney World Championships, and uh, we're really looking forward to racing in front of a home crowd. It's, it's, it means an awful lot to everyone. To a man, we're all stronger. You know, we've had a cracking eight months over the winter. Uh, we trained really hard. You know, Jürgen has really cracked the whip this year, and, um, you know, we're strong, we're fit, and... And away, the gates are down, the race is on in Great Britain. Slightly slow there. Hodgie sitting closer uh, to us, Andrew Triggs, Hodge there. First couple of strokes, a little bit slow, but now Great Britain start to unleash. They just push out the legs, push out the power, wind it up, and they've got two feet after 100 metres. A good start there, Dan. Yes, they do like to get out fast, and uh, they've that, that was their hallmark uh, last year. Getting out fast, finding a really good rhythm that would carry them throughout the whole race. So they take it off very fast, 42, 43 strokes a minute. Then they settle after the three quarters of a minute into a race pace, uh, taking about, about 36, 35, 36 strokes a minute. And that's their comfortable uh, uh, cruising speed. And then from that, they can do a sprint if they have to, to respond to, uh, to other crews coming up to them, or they can just keep that steady. But there they are, looking very good and long. Just a lane order, Germany three up in lane at number one, Canada in the two, Great Britain in the three, Netherlands are in four, Germany two in lane number five, and Slovenia in lane number six, closest uh, to the left of the picture. They're out already, but at the moment, the race now starting to develop. Great Britain, Dan, doing their usual thing. They absolutely blast out to the first timing mark, the 500-meter mark. We're seeing now at three-quarters of a length up with 500 down. Great Britain starting to stretch out. Three-quarters of a length there, and Netherlands just sitting comfortably. Dan, it's going to be um, really a show of what, to summarize, is brute force from Great Britain. And, and sort of real finesse technique from the Netherlands. Well, I wouldn't say that. I, I, I like the way that, uh, that the Great Britain crew is so elastic and stretchy. In fact, they, they, they say they feel much stronger than, uh, than last year. Uh, through the winter, they put on a lot of, of bulk and weight. And I just hope that they won't get a bit muscle-bound and lose that elasticity and flow that they have developed. But they're looking very nice here uh, as they get to three-quarters of a length up on a very good and, uh, and, and, as you say, technically very efficient Dutch four. Okay, looking at uh, Andrew Hodge in the stroke suit, Alex Partridge sits behind him. Peter Reid sits behind him, known as the commander. And Steve Williams up in the bow seat, Olympic champion. And just looking in the middle of that picture there in the very light blue T-shirt. We can see uh, Jürgen Grover. We'll see if we can get another uh, shot of him. Congratulations to Jürgen Grover. Honorary OBE he received this year for all his outstanding and hard work with Team GB on the rowing. So we're coming up to the 1,000-metre mark now. Great Britain uh, really consolidating a very, very good start here in this opening regatta of the 2006 World Cup Series. They're leading the crew from uh, the Netherlands in lane number four. And so far, uh, Andrew Hodge in stroke seat will be uh, pretty pleased with this. But we're going to get to see as it comes side on. We'll see now it's half a length, Great Britain from the Netherlands. Daniel now in the third 500. Um, the Netherlands should be uh, pretty quick here. 
Well, they are quick. They, uh, they're three guys from their Olympic eight that got a silver medal. But the British four in the semi-final faltered a little bit in the last uh, 500 metres when Canada attacked them. And they were very aware that they lost their rhythm a bit as they, as they uh, came under attack. Uh, Hodge and Stroke wanted to keep it steady and the guy behind him started to try and push it on and they lost a little bit of cohesion. I think they'll be ready for it this time and as, uh, as the Holland starts really to put, put, put the pressure on them, I think they'll stretch out but they'll cut that cohesion for the last 700 metres. Great Britain have done a big push there going through the 1100 metre mark. Uh, they pretty much uh, poised out to 1000. They've done a big push, they've moved on. The Netherlands have gone with them. They've just stretched it out a little bit. We're looking there at Germany. You just see now um, Andrew Hodge there on the left of the pitcher, starting to move it up, but Netherlands, I just love the style here, I just think they're just long and they're slick and they, they move. Float. They do, they float out, they let the boat run really beautifully, and they were two seconds faster in the semi-finals than the British, uh, than the British ball. So they've, uh, they've certainly got pace and they've come on since last year, and they are certainly putting on uh, pressure now. So Great Britain really a long, hard winter, Jürgen Grobler has upped the training, all those hours in the gym, out on the water, slogging up and down when it comes to this, the opening regatta. And at the moment, 1,500 metres, they're half a length up on Netherlands. I think we're going to be in for a very, very explosive last 500 now. They're going to be under pressure. They would have been hoping for at least a one-length lead at this particular point. We know from last year at the World Championships that the Dutch were able to really squeeze on here. And I think the Dutch are going to have a good old sniff here, Dan. Yes, they're up at 36 strokes a minute, the Dutch. Uh, Germany moved into third place ahead of the Canadians, who are really expected to be up there in the, in the, in the field. But uh, both Britain has moved ahead again. They've, they've turned it on, they've seen the danger, and they've moved on up again also to 38 strokes a minute. So they know what to expect, and they're holding off this very strong challenge from Holland. Steve Williams to the right of your pitcher on the far crew. That's Great Britain in the blue and white. He makes the call. He's going to have to make some big calls now with 250 metres to go because here come the Dutch again. Up the rate goes. This is Germany that we're looking at. We're just watching the uh, crew from the Netherlands in lane number four, starting to crank it up for the line. They've got 200 metres remaining. Great Britain now half a length of lead. Germany two in lane at number five, currently in third position. But the race for the gold medal with 175 metres down at the moment, Great Britain half a length over the Netherlands. Yes, Great Britain got up to 39 strokes a minute and they're holding them up. It's still half a length, but it's a great, great finish here. Inside 100, now the Dutch go up again. They're up to 40 strokes a minute. It's a canvas. Less than, here comes Germany too. In lane number five, it's all getting so close up to the line. Five strokes remaining. Great Britain are poised to hold it, but only just. Here comes Germany in lane number five through but wasn't that very very close there a matter of feet and inches on the line it's set up for a fantastic 2006 series and great britain have still got a bit of work to do daniel certainly that fast german finish there take took them to second place that was a very very strong surge from germany uh, i think that we're going to be uh, uh, under a lot of pressure in the next two world cup races so Great Britain get it, only just Germany to squeeze it into second, and Netherlands, they hang on to it in third. Great Britain there in first place, we expect that, but what we don't expect is how closely you run it was. Germany in second place, and the Netherlands in third. It's going to be a fantastic season. Off in the lose, and the, the, other, the other five do, they've all got form behind them, but as well, they don't know who I, they don't have a clear idea of who I am or what I'm capable of, and you know, watch this space. Well, here we are, 1,000 metres. Halfway, Alan Campbell, Great Britain in lane at number three, maintains the very, very important clear water. In second place, Marcel Hacker has moved up. Marcel was just a little bit lazy in that first 500, Dan. He was, he likes to get out uh, quite fast, Hacker, but uh, he's putting a lot of pressure now on Campbell. The question is here, Campbell is so inexperienced at this level. Uh, these guys are used to dicing with each other and, uh, and they know the, each other's form. But here, look how well his boat is running. He's just moving along really beautifully. He's taking advantage as well that the wind is coming off, uh, off the bank on his side. So there's a little, he's got a little bit of protection off the bank there. But he is moving so well, and Hacker here, who looks laboured, he looks a bit heavy and laboured. You expect him really to be much, much sharper. 
big, powerful man. You'd expect him, he sits up tall. You'd expect him to drive those legs down and move the boat a bit faster. But I would expect now in the next six or 700 meters that Hacker's going to try and, and uh, pick up pick up uh, on, on Alan Cowan. Breeze starting to come over from the far side as we look at it now. There's a bit of a cross breeze, which is going to favor uh, the middle cruise towards the top now. And obviously, uh, Campbell there on the right. You can see the crew starting to come up, starting to challenge. But if I was Alan Campbell in this position, you know, I'd be loving this. I'd be absolutely loving this. You're looking back at a world-class field, and it really just takes so much confidence out of it. Lane at number five, Marcel Hacker, though, hunting him down, stroke by stroke, bring him with him. A Caron from Sweden up there in lane at number two. And then we're looking at Shinnick there on the left in the white boat, the bows of the white boat. You just see the plays coming in. That's Andre Shinnick from the Czech Republic, bronze medalist in the World Championships last year. So they're all starting to come back. There's 1,500 meters down. There's 500 to go. It's the opening final of the 2006 World Cup Series. And Alan Campbell now is being caught. He had a great first 1,000 meters, but he's now starting to be caught. And Dan, Marcel Hacker is starting to look very, very impressive. Yeah, it's the experience. It's the experience of those uh, those, those uh, single scholar specialists who have to really pull him back. He had to work very hard, Alan Campbell, to get uh, that lead, having had a rather slow first couple of strokes. But uh, now let's see. Let's let's see what Alan Campbell can do with the pressure really, really on. I would expect him to get hauled back by at least Hacker. But look at the way, look at Sweet. Look at Coronan moving as well, really taking taking up the last 500 meters. Alan Campbell now towering. What has he got in the tank for this last 450 meters? He's still keeping good length. Marcel Hacker looking strong as he strolls away. He's out to half a length now, looking across the boys for the boy line. Alan Campbell from Great Britain in the white boat through 250 meters, holding on. Just the last closing stages, holding on to that second place, the silver medal. He can see Corona from, from Sweden in lane two coming up against him on this side as well. Olaf Tufta from Norway starting to push on. In the white boat, though, Alan Campbell has lifted it again. He's pushing back on Marcel Acker from Germany. 150 meters to go. He's moving up again. He's moving up again. He's really, he's going to catch Hacker. Hacker thought he had him. Hacker thought he had him, he still probably can hold him off, but Alan Campbell is really moving. So inside 50 metres now, and Alan Campbell from Great Britain is going to have a fantastic result here. Marcel Hacker thought he had it, but the white boat of Great Britain coming through onto the line. It'll be gold for uh, Alan Campbell, Great Britain, and what a result. Time to perfection. That is how you race in the men's heavyweight single skulls. Gary, where did he get that from? That last, that 250 metres. What an extraordinary opening round for him. It just shows it all. There you go. That's what it's about. It's about beating the best, and he certainly has today in this final. Fantastic result there from Alan Campbell. Marcel Hacker, well, you thought you had it, but you just took your eye off, and you can't take your eye off from one man, Alan Campbell, Great Britain. There it is, a sensational win from Alan Campbell of Great Britain. Marcel Hacker squeezed out in second, and Coronen from Sweden in third. Well, medals at this level for Great Britain rowers at, in single sculling are few and far between. A fantastic moment for Alan Campbell of Northern Ireland. Let's hear what he made of it. Alan, many congratulations. You're obviously not intimidated to be surrounded by Olympic and world champions. Um, <laughs> I am a little bit actually, but uh, I mean, it's you know, I've come here to do my my skull, my you know, my thing, and that's where I'm at. So I mean, it's I've shown I've got the speed, and you know, we got to keep stepping up and up and up towards the world championships, and eventually on to Beijing and London 2012. So uh, we all want to know, Marcel Hacker, who you pushed into second place, and everybody else, where did you get that last 30 strokes? Uh, sort of came from nowhere a bit. I, I just. It's one of those things, just the determination. I just wanted it so badly. I mean, I've worked so hard. You know, I've done a lot of hours, you know, many miles in the boat and stuff, and it's just, it's all paid off. And it was just one of those things, it's like, no, I've done too much. I've come too far to not win this now. Great Britain are the world champions in this event. It's the women's quadruple skulls. They've got a new lineup. A new member joins the team, Debbie Flood, in the bow seat. They were great last year. What will they do this year? Catherine Granger there takes the women's quad off it, powering away. The first five out to ten strokes, already though looking very, very strong. A lane order for you. China two up there in lane at number one. Romania 
in two, Great Britain in three, Russia in four, China one in five, Australia closest to us in lane number six. Dan, your uh, observations of this crew over the last few days, seeing them out training? Uh, they look good, they look good. I'm just noticing going off the start there that uh, the, uh, the, the, the stroke side blade there of Catherine Granger is going quite deep, the bow side blade is going quite deep there. They're a bit untidy on that side. Uh, but seeing as they as they took off, that was something that I hope they'll iron out through the through the race. But Russia has taken the lead. Russia was third last year uh, in in this race. They've got a new person in their boat as well. Fedotova is doing the single at the moment, and they've brought a new a new uh, crew member in. Uh, but Great Britain now getting into their stride, just finding their right their rhythm, their race rhythm, and holding that advance there from uh, from Russia. Australia closest to us, looking very neat there, very long, very neat, very effective. Good parallel movement there. There's no, they're not lifting up. They're just driving parallel, their bodies parallel back through the boat, not lifting their heads really above the the, uh, the line. So going through the first timing mark, 500 meters, Australia from Russia, Great Britain are in third position. Lane order for you, China two up in one, Romania in two, Great Britain in three, Russia in four, China one five Australia race leaders closest to us in lane number six so Catherine Granger there sits in the stroke seat she's uh, in charge of setting the rhythm putting it down the boat behind her Francis Horton in the three seat Sarah Winkless in the uh, two seat and the new member Debbie Flood up there in the bow seat replacing Rebecca Romero the sport has lost uh, Rebecca Romero to cycling. She just had, you had enough, Dan. She wanted a change. I think so. I mean, she just... Uh, it was a, a back injury that seemed to be the, the, the reason. But then after that back injury, she got approached by the cyclists, I think. And, uh, and that seemed like a good option. She'd done what she wanted to do in rowing. I'm a bit alarmed by Catherine Granger's uh, left, left skull. It is going a bit deep right the way through the stroke. And that's... Uh, that does mean that she's back in water a little bit. It's, uh, it's not as effective as it should be. They, you just really want to cover the tip of the blade and no more. But it's going quite deep, and that's, uh, that's quite, uh, quite um, ineffective. Australia's looking very good there. Uh, they're very smooth, very consistent, and that's quite a worry. It'll be important to see how the Great Britain crew develops over the second thousand metres of this race. Australia leading the field now. A little look over the left shoulder of Katrina Sens in the bow seat of the Australian crew just watching the mark. She's leading from Russia, Great Britain, Romania, everybody chasing behind. Just a couple of feet in it, but Great Britain are long, they're relaxed, they're loose. What we really now have to see is them step on because these guys are the world champions and they did very well last year and a tough race to, to gain that so from the German crew, which I'm not here today, more about them in a second. As world champions, you want to come out, Daniel, in the first race of the next season and put your mark on, on the event, don't you? Well, they're doing it now. Look, you see they're doing it now. They've just hardened on the stroke. Imperceptible, actually. They haven't really raised the rate. They've just hardened on in the water, and they've checked the Australian uh, advance there, and they're now just about uh, level. They've, they've dropped away from uh, Russia. Russia's fallen back. That was a quick start. They burnt themselves out a little bit. But now Great Britain has got to get up now level with Australia. Catherine Granger can just sit there and lead the boat, make sure it's nice and long, finish, catch. The catch we call the front end of the stroke. She's got to get the crew out there and allow the tall and the leverage. Uh, Francis Horton behind us, Sarah Winkless behind her again in the middle of that boat. Great picture there. Look how long they all are. They go out to the catch, the front end, and they just lever it. Put the body weight behind, move the boat underneath you, send it away, and that gives you half a length lead over Australia in lane number six. Larry, did you see that lift in the rate? They, they went from 34 to 36 in about three strokes, and you could see the whole thing took off life. And it's moved up, it's moved on now, and that's when they moved it back on, uh, on uh, Australia. So this is Great Britain's project for an Olympic gold medal in Beijing in 2008. It's not a bad start so far. The first thousand was just a little bit relaxed. They were down, but they've come through in the middle part. It's 500 meters to go, this final of the women's quadruple skulls. Catherine Granger, Francis Horton, Sarah Winkless and Debbie Flood up in the bow seat looking, looking pretty cool, pretty calm, under control. That third 500 was pretty remarkable actually. They went from about half a length down to half a length up. It took a length in uh, less than 500 metres. That was a very good move. And now look at them, stretching out, looking confident. That's some very nice sculling and uh, certainly through the race Catherine has improved that left skull. It's now covering very nicely, just the tip of the blade.
great shot there. Look at that shot. The timing, the blades, bang, into the water, place and push. Just place and push. Wonderful rhythm here. And to the right of your pitcher there, Debbie Flood, replacing uh, Rebecca Romero, who was the world champion. She sat in this seat last year. We're looking now through the last 250 metres. Great Britain clear. They clear. It's a great position to be in when you can just look back and you know this race is shown up. This race is ours. We can enjoy it. It's been a great winter. You can see so far, so good. Russia coming back on the uh, uh, on, on Australia now. Russia found something extra. Maybe Australia, a long trip from Australia to here to uh, to make this regatta. Uh, they're looking a bit tired as they approach the line. So the girls will allow themselves a good smile. At less than 100 metres now remain in the final of the women's quadruple skulls. It's been a great race. They've done all that they've asked for, really. They've moved through in that uh, third 500. And now they can keep their heads up, they can take the applause, it's coming up to the line. Great Britain opened their 2006 account here at the World Cup impressively all the way. They clear, they're through, and they're looking very, very good. Showing the style that made them world champions last year. Great Britain win, Australia in second place, and Russia in third. But Germany, the world silver medalist from last year, are still to come. Gold medal presentation then for Debbie Flood, Francis Horton, Catherine Granger there and Sarah Winkless. They sounded confident beforehand. They had every right to be a very, very impressive performance from the women's quad. And afterwards, they spoke to Gary. Oh, next year's. Catherine, well done. Great start to the season. Happy with that? Very happy with the result, absolutely. Um, it was a really... We, it, the first race is always the hardest race. You never know quite what to expect from other countries and from ourselves. Um, we wanted to sort of step out the first race showing our dominance and it's exactly what we did. First half, though, you're in third position at one point. A bit worried? Never worry, Guy. Um, it's uh, it wasn't you know it wasn't we don't plan to be in third, um, and there's definitely areas of the race we have to improve on, but um, obviously we didn't let it bother us and moved through exactly as we wanted to. Debbie, uh, new into the quad, into the bow seat there. Uh, good row for you. Is all going well? Yeah, it's good. It's nice to be back in the quads, and it's the new combination. Very exciting. Good to have a win for our first race, and you know that's how we need to carry on. So. Gives you a bit more confidence as well, obviously, coming into this combination. Yeah, definitely. You know, we, we said we wanted to go out and win, and uh, we did what we wanted to do. Sarah, just uh, talking on the long term, though, Germany weren't here today. They're going to be on your horizon at some point. For sure. I think there's several quads who weren't here today, and what you see from us as well isn't the fi finished product. We've got definitely more speed that Catherine spoke about, and um, we're looking forward to getting back to training and finding it. Well done, girls, today, and good luck for the rest of the season. Mars is always telling us races aren't won by rowing uh, sexy or clever. So, <laughs> so we aim to just get a really fast start, row really long, row really powerfully, and see where that leaves us. Yeah, it's a, it's a different day tomorrow. Everybody starts equal, so we've we've got to be prepared for anything to happen. We don't know what the other crews were doing today, so we've just got to go out there and and deliver. Coming up now to the 1,000 metre mark in this final, the women's heavyweight double skulls. And Great Britain's Annie Vernon and Anna Bebbington have had a fantastic one, first 1,000 metres. They're going through in first place. They're being hunted, though, at this time by Germany in lane number two. A lane order for you up there in lane one, the Czech Republic. Germany in two, Great Britain in three, Belarus in four, China one in five, and China two in lane number six here and now look at this race here in the yellow boat closest to us that's great britain annie vernon on your right of your pitcher from rob roy rowing club anna bebbington on the left of your pitcher from leander club coached by miles forbes thomas from thames rowing club they're feeling a lot of pressure now from uh, germany uh, stephanie schiller there in the stroke seat very for a young young scholar she's only 20 but she's a very experienced scholar now the pressure comes on, and it's interesting. It's going to be interesting to see whether Great Britain, who posted the fastest uh, time in the semi-finals, see whether they can now hold off and respond to this challenge from Germany. And they feel they've got nothing to lose, really. It's a, it's a combination, a new combination this year. Um, both these women know each other very well. They've come out of the uh, world-class start program, 
and uh, they love racing but again maybe just now with Germany starting to ease through that the experience or, or lack of is starting to show well how can they respond to this because uh, they've got six 600 700 meters to go they've got to start to work it up again and you can see they're building it up to 34 strokes a minute Germany's still quite steady. They've come through very, very steadily, Germany. You can see how well their boat is running. Look at the bow of their boat. It doesn't check at all. It just keeps on running. 500 metres now remain in the final of the women's double skulls. And Great Britain, who led to the halfway mark in the third 500, started to get challenged by Germany in lane number two. The German double skull have just peeped through them. We're going to get the confirmation there. We can see just three or four feet, but it's close again. Great Britain have found something else. They're hanging on to the coattails of Germany in lane number two. They're in the second place, silver medal position, which at the moment, Dan, is great. They really responded, great. It, they responded and they've moved back through again. They are doing what Alec Campbell did in, this, in his uh, single skull. They have responded, they have moved up again, and they have taken the lead again from Germany. Germany seem to be stuck on this same rate. They haven't been able to raise their rate, but there they are in the stroke seat. Uh, Anna Bebbington has lifted the rate. She's moved it up, and they've just cut right the way back through again. Now about two-thirds, about a third of a length in front and moving on. This is great rhythm, absolutely great rhythm. And what they're getting now is boat speed. They're able to lift up the rate, and they get the corresponding boat speed. Both of these women have absolutely nothing to lose. They absolutely love to race. They're in the thick of it now. On the right-hand side, Germany, Belarus on their left-hand side. They know they're getting closer and closer to the line. We're inside 250 metres now, and they can just get stronger and stronger. They've got to keep on it, though. They've got to keep that raid up, because they'll know the German crew will start to come back again as the crews begin to sprint in. 200 metres remain. 37 strokes a minute, they've moved, they've moved it up another gear, and they are really racing it in. Germany cannot respond that well. They're now half a length ahead and moving it right up, up to 37 and a half, 38 strokes a minute, and moving towards the line. 100 metres now remain. This, again, is going to be a great, great result for Great Britain in the opening at Regatta of this 2006 World Cup Series. Less than five or six strokes to go. They've got half a length on Germany. They're going to be smiling as they come through the lane, and it's just just wonderful what a result it's gold now today for great britain in the heavyweight women's double skulls what a great great performance that was two girls from cambridge uh, both uh, very young just really first time onto the scene and they have produced a wonderful result there gold medal first time out a fabulous result there for great britain 500 last 500 in that race and Annie Vernon and Anna Bevington receiving those gold medals. They've got such a great future ahead of them. A fourth gold medal at this World Cup for British Rose. Let's hear from the double scholars. Annie, well done. A great race today. But that last sort of sprint in, where did that come from? Uh, well, Anna and I are renowned for um, being quite powerful in the last 500. So it's just a case of case of putting into practice what we what we practiced. So, yeah, it was good. And no surprises to be out leading for most of uh, the race? Um, well, not a surprise since we've been here. No, we're both ren uh, renowned for being quite slow off the start. So, <laughs> but we've worked quite a lot on, on our first 500 with our coach, Miles Forbes Thomas. So it's good to get out in front and just be able to sit there and control the race. Uh, moving forward, now you're going to be pausing and looking forward to that. Oh, very much so. Hopefully, the uh, Kiwi double will be there, so we can really see how we rank against the best in the world. I mean, that's it. They're the world champions, aren't they? And that's going to be a real benchmark for you guys going forward. Yes, definitely. I'm very excited about getting the chance to race them. Well, we we'll look forward to seeing you guys uh, doing the same again in three weeks' time. Thanks very much. Thank you.